These are the advanced procedures that we're currently doing in the multipurpose OR. That's another picture of a percutaneous valve. This is a catheter that actually has a turbine on the end of it that spins extremely rapidly and sucks blood through it. So if you have a patient who's in heart failure, you can position this catheter just after the heart and it takes over the work of the heart until either the heart gets better or you do some other destination therapy. And this is a branched endovascular stent graft. You can see the, the graft that I showed you initially did not have these branches on it. So this is custom designed. It's actually made in Australia, the only place in the world. It takes about four months to do this. We send them a CAT scan of the individual patient. They custom design this. We approve the plan. They make it. They ship it to us. We put it in. So it's a bit of a complex process. But I'm happy to say that this has dramatically changed the way we do big aneurysm surgery. So this is aneurysms that are in the chest and the abdomen together. We now do this with a four centimeter incision in the left axilla under the arm and um, both groins. And we did 24 of these last year, the second most in North America. This has completely eliminated the need to do these long incisions that start in your back behind your scapula, come around to the front and go down to your pelvis. Massive operations with big morbidity. And what you can see here, here's the regular stent graft and here's the two branches that have been constructed to come out into the kidneys. And the way that you put those in is you have a catheter come up from below, there's a hole in the graft, you have to get through the hole into the artery and deploy the separate stent within a stent. So this takes a fair amount of skill, but we're um, now really comfortable doing this procedure. Schematically, this is what it looks like. This is the most complex that we would do, where there's four branches, one to the right kidney, one to the left kidney, one to the intestine, and one to the liver. Again, this is all done through these small incisions rather than an incision which would be two or two and a half feet long in the chest and abdomen. And that's a collaboration between medical imaging and vascular surgery. The next frontier is the aortic arch. Um, this repairing the aortic arch generally requires putting a patient on heart bypass and then circulatory arrest. Lots of potential for brain problems after this and for heart problems. What we would now do is make an incision in the groin and there would be a hole here, here, and here, and you'd have a tube come up inside and put a second graft into there. That's the artery to the right side of the brain. That's the left side of the brain. That's the left arm. That's the branch to the right arm. So this will revolutionize the cardiac approach to aneurysms of the aortic arch. It's already been shown to significantly decrease the morbidity and mortality and paraplegia rates of this operation. And this is something that we're going to be doing in collaboration with cardiac surgery and medical imaging. Based on our initial experience working together with medical imaging, we clearly think this is the way to go. So I think I've shown you that we have gone from Mr. Elliott's vision to the reality of a fully functional, integrated operating room that has imaging capabilities. This promotes patient management by promoting multidisciplinary team approach to patient care. We have already seen improvements in outcomes in patient care. The mortality of an open aneurysm is significantly higher than the mortality of a stent craft aneurysm, at least in the early stages after the procedure. And most importantly, we basically don't say no to anybody. Just about any patient can have an aortic aneurysm repair through a, through a minimally invasive incision. And that's a big uh, advance. And I think that this will allow UHN to continue to be a worldwide leader in the delivery of cardiovascular therapy. I'd be delighted to answer any questions you might have, and thank you for your attention. Yes? The stent graft procedure dramatically cuts down, and that's been shown in prospective trials where people were either randomized to having open surgery or stent graft surgery. Yes, the cardiac valve, the valve has markers on it that are gold and they're very easily seen under fluoroscopy. So you position, you do an angiogram to know where the relevant structures are like the coronary arteries and where the valve starts 
and then basically what you do, I didn't show this, but when you have the angiogram on the screen, you take a marker and you draw an outline of where the arteries are, and that tells you exactly where you want to drop the valve, and if you see where the marker is, it tells you exactly the position of the valve. So it's very precise. Yes? Yes, and there's actually plans, once we have an advanced package that's going to be available for monitoring the heart, it's called the McKesson Hemodynamics Package, there is a plan to do electrophysiology type interventions in this room, but there will also be advanced electrophysiology interventions done in the new electrophysiology or EP room that's going to be constructed as part of the IQ project, and that should come online later this year or early next year. Yes, we're just, we're talking about next generation, higher resolution. If you notice the panel that the imaging is done, it's a flat panel and it's much wider than what currently exists in the cath lab. So the quality of the images is significantly improved and the field of vision is bigger, at the same time decreasing the amount of radiation because the technology is just better. So you see better, you do better. Uh, no, there, you could still have the procedure in the old environment and it's very safe and effective, but I think it'll be even better once we have the new equipment installed. Sorry, in the back? Do we use medicated stents? Do we use medicated stents? Uh, so that's more the domain of the interventional cardiologist. Yes, some of the stents that get deployed in the, cardi in the coronary arteries here do contain medications that are designed to prevent the onset of scar, uh, <coughs> pardon me, scarring. Those procedures are typically done in the cardiac cath lab, but they could be done in this environment. So if you brought somebody from the emergency room who was having acute chest pain, and you did an angiogram in the multipurpose OR, you didn't know what was wrong, and you found that they had a narrowed coronary and the decision was to treat it with a balloon and a stent, you could deliver that in this room. Yes? So that's a very interesting question. The first stent crafts was act, were actually for the aneurysms were designed by a surgeon in Buenos Aires named Juan Perotti uh, and a surgeon about at the same time in the Soviet Union. These are probably 20 years old. There have been multiple iterations of uh, different types of stent crafts and there's actually been a lot of venture capital involved with this and one company taking over another company. Um, I would say that we're currently using the fourth or fifth generation of stent graft technologies. And um, just so f to answer, to go even further, I showed you some stent grafts that have branches in them, and they take four months to make. One of the surgeons that we've recruited here, who's now on staff at UHN, his name is Leonard J. He's going to be the only Masters of Engineering trained vascular surgeon in North America. His idea is put in a one-size-fits-all stent graft, cover those branches, see inside the body with ultrasound where the branches are, put a laser catheter inside and cut out a hole where the branch is, and construct the branch graft inside a patient. I believe that will be the new standard of care for complex vascular patients, and that um, that'll be the reality here. So the research to go to the next generation of complex stent grafts is happening here.